So, Buckminster Fuller said, if you want to change something, don't fight against the existing reality. Instead, innovate a new model, a better model, that makes the old model obsolete. We're all here today because we believe education is calling for these new models, new ways of doing things, new ways of thinking about things. I'm working on a model, and I'm going to share that with you. But first, I want to talk about why it's necessary. When we're born, our capacity for learning is at its highest potential. Our synapses are firing, our neural networks are forming, and we're basically learning how to exist in our world. And that capacity over time slowly wanes, but the good news, at the same time, we gain more experiences. And as we gain more experiences, we begin growing more. And then we get to this magical place, a place where many of you will be in a really, really quick time. 26 years old. <laughs> Boom, it goes like that, trust me. This is the sweet spot. This is where our capacity for learning and our experiences cross. And this can be where we begin the journey of our lives and learn how we're going to leave our mark on this world. So UCLA conducted a survey where they interviewed a few thousand college freshmen and asked them, what is the most important thing for you to do in your work and in your life? 75% of them said, working for a cause, making the world better, was more important than even making money. So that's pretty awesome, right? So I'm curious, what, what's happening with these 75 percenters as they go down the road? So I did a little research, and what I realized is more and more people are going to grad school. And not just grad school, but business school. Women, at a ratio of 2 to 1, are choosing MBAs. And when you look at men, that ratio jumps to the next slide, to 10 to 1. And what's the average age of these MBAs? 25 and a half, right at that sweet spot. And it makes sense, right? Here they are. They have these big dreams, big ambitions. And they realize they, they need this academic foundation. We need this degree. We need this donning of expertise so we can go out there with that street cred, right? But the problem is, these 75 percenters, they often want to make the world different. They want to change the world. And when you go and you get an MBA, at best, you learn how to exist in the world as it is. And more likely, you're learning how to exist in a world that no longer exists. So the MBA was born out of a bygone era. Our grandparents' time, or my grandparents' time at least, where where you got a job, whoops, that was the punchline. <laughs> so my grandparents' era, where you're, you're 24 years old, you get, you get a job at GE or Ford, and you work there for 35 years, you get your pension, and then you move to Boca Raton, get a house, and play shuffleboard. But MBAs, they're costing more, and they're worth less right now. So these MBAs are coming out, and they have tremendous amounts of student loans. So all those dreams that they had a few years back, now they're focused on paying bills, paying back student loans, trying to survive, and those dreams get tucked away. And that's not OK. That's not good for them. It's not good for our world. And believe it or not, it's not even good for business. A colleague of mine invests in entrepreneurs to scale their businesses. And as he's deciding with whom to invest, he always asks them, what's the single most important thing that's holding you and your business back from realizing their potential? The answer isn't lack of access to capital. 
but the inability to find quality people, capable people, to realize what this business is capable of. And this is incredibly exceptional, given the fact that, as you've heard before, over 50% of college grads under the age of 25 are either unemployed or underemployed. So what my colleague and the entrepreneurs he's interviewing are realizing is that while MBAs have tremendous amounts of knowledge, what they're lacking is the ability to apply this knowledge. They're lacking the critical thinking. They're lacking the complex reasoning. They're lacking the ability to work with people that aren't just like them. The ability to take initiative, the ability to problem solve. So if they can't apply this knowledge, what is it worth? So, on a lighter note. Last month, I was with Alan Webb and a handful of our other crazy conspirators, and we took this road trip exploring what is the future of higher education. So one of the people that I was able to interview was an uh, entrepreneur, author, and hero of yours truly, Seth Godin. So I asked Seth, what are your thoughts on the future of education? People who are hired for good jobs don't want to know where you went to school. They don't want to know how you obey. They want to know what you've done. They want to know what you're going to do. And the way you do that is not by showing them a piece of paper that lists brand names, you know, Yale or whatever. It's by showing them a list of projects, by letting them see the projects, by letting them understand the, the trail you left behind of where you made a ruckus and how you did it. Once you find the guts to innovate, once you find the guts to pick yourself, once you find the guts to leave a trail behind, A, people start calling you up because they can see what you could, how you're going to create, and B, you're less likely to want to work for them in the first place because you're already doing something great on your own. Smart dude. We need schools where we can learn how to make a ruckus, where we can get out there, where we can push ourselves to the edge, where we can be vulnerable, where we can prototype and fail quickly and learn quickly. These guys, from Abraham Lincoln to Buckminster Fuller, and yes, Steve Jobs, <laughs> they realize this. This is why they either never went to school or dropped out. Anita Roddick, the founder of The Body Shop, a billion dollar company with 77 million customers in 25 countries, she realized that if she had been taught about business, she never would have succeeded. To be an entrepreneur, to be a problem solver, we need to get out there in the world and solve problems. Our education system has a responsibility to those 75 percenters who want to make our world better. We need to be in relationship. Our educational institutions need to support these dreamers, these doers, these makers. So this is the model that I'm developing with some really awesome people the mycelium school. What we're doing is we're inviting 14 emerging leaders to Asheville, North Carolina in September to participate in an experiment in higher education. What we're doing is we're creating the conditions and creating the experiences for these emerging leaders to develop the hard skills they need the real world connections with some of the greatest doers and thinkers across the world, and the hands-on entrepreneurial experiences that they need to dream big and make their dreams happen. And actually, we have seven core courses, and Sense of Self is one of them. So we're able to do this very leanly Mycelium is a sixth of the cost of traditional MBAs. And when our participants learn they have the energy to do what it is that they're here to do, which is get out in the world and make shit happen. But mycelium isn't the answer. None of us here on stage have the answer. And that's a really cool thing. We're in this time of experimentation 
in this time of exploration, we're all working on these new models that are becoming the future of education. And we're doing this because we have this insatiable, unbending belief in the human spirit when it's fully alive and well-connected. So if you want to go out there, you are feeling called, and you are those 75% of game changers out there, know that you already have what it takes. You have the courage, you have the curiosity, you have the passion, and you have the drive to make it happen. There is no degree out there that will affirm this. And know also, if you choose to pursue higher ed, that there's going to be institutions of learning that are going to try to bend you into a system that's no longer relevant. And know also that there are plenty of ways that you can learn. And there are a lot of us out here creating these new models that will support you in your dreams and say yes. So whatever it is that you choose, however you wish to follow your path, just make sure that it's your path. And then get out there and make a ruckus. Thank you.